Trust Once Lost. Chapter 24, Counting the Days. It's not a big deal! I yelled. It is the big deal! Applejack replied. Mount Pony has a right to force you to do something you don't want to do! I want you to feel safe here, and I do feel safe! I interrupted. Washing someone's mouth out with soap is a bit old-fashioned, but it's not like she would actually hurt me! What's not a big deal? The youngest member of the Apple family rounded the corner into the kitchen. Nothing. I said. Applejack sighed. <sighs> Crane said a bad word in front of Granny. Applebloom's face made an O of realization. Ah, uh, she got the soap. Applebloom stuck her tongue out. Blech. See? I said. Not a big deal. My fatigue caught up with me while we were eating breakfast. My hoof grip nearly shattered a glass of apple juice. I want you to make sure you look out for Green at school today. Applejack said. She might have trouble meeting so many new ponies at once. I feel tired. I said. Do I have to go to school today? Yes. AJ said. You can't miss school just because you're tired. But I just got here. Don't I get some time to settle in? I know you're nervous about going to school, but it's not going to get any better by putting it off. What if I'm sick, though? Do you feel sick? E oh, right, she couldn't tell when I'm lying. No, I just feel sick with anxiety. As pathetic as it sounds, I found it almost impossible to watch the episodes where the Crusaders were getting bullied. It made me apoplectic with rage to see bullies getting away with it. And yet, just like in real life, there was nothing I could do to stop it. It'll be fun, Apple Bloom assured. This Charlie is real and nice. That's not the teacher I'm worried about. Apple Bloom will be right there with you, and she'll make sure no pony is mean to you. Ugh, time to bring up the big guns. You said you wouldn't force me to do anything. I accused. Well, I don't want to go to school. Just give me the textbooks and I'll read them myself. <sighs> school isn't just about learning things from books. AJ said. I want you to go to school so you can make some friends. I could be friends with Apple Bloom. If you try to put it off, it's not going to get any easier. Applejack said. You do have to go to school. It's the law. <laughs> what are they going to do? I asked. Throw me in a dungeon? Banish me? Banish me and throw me in a dungeon in a place they'll banish me to? If you don't go to school, I'll get in trouble, and then I won't be able to look after you anymore. I managed to brush my teeth without help. The trouble was mostly gripping the toothbrush at the right angle. Comparing the toothbrush I'd been given to Apple Blooms, the handle was much wider and flatter, which made it easier to grasp with my inconsistent hoof grip. Whether it was designed for a foal or for some pony with a disability, I suppose it made no practical difference. Did you need help to brush your mane? Asked Applejack. I'd never owned a hairbrush. I'd had a crew cut since I was a little kid. It's fine, don't worry about it. Don't you want to look your best to meet your new classmates? I don't want to meet them at all. I answered back. It's not like it will make a difference anyway. I realized I was just being obstinate. Fine! I admitted. I don't know how to brush my mane. I really need a haircut. I didn't think AJ would let me get a buzz cut, but I could at least make it shorter and easier to deal with. Considering my new body was about 40% hair by volume, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting. Brushing your mane implied brushing your mane and tail, but we're still done in just a few minutes. There were a few tangles, but I focused on not letting any of the discomfort show on my face. Short hair would probably have less risk of people grabbing it. But that's not something I should have to worry about. Probably. Ow. There's another knot. You don't have to walk us to school, you know, said Apple Bloom. I know you're all grown up, AJ replied. But it's Green's first day, and I want to have a word with Charlie. Fine. You're not embarrassed to be seen with your big sis, are you? Better to nip this conversation in the bud. She doesn't want her classmates to think she's a baby who needs to be walked to school. I said. It's nothing personal. Apple Bloom nodded. If those feelings at school are teasing you again, I can speak to their parents. Please don't. 
Cheryl Lee wasn't surprised to see Applejack approaching her. It was common that parents would want to talk before leaving their precious child with her for the first time. And it was nice to see Applejack was so quickly growing to fill that role for her new foster foal. The file Cheryl Lee had been given on her newest students was surprisingly light. No transcripts from previous schools, no commendations, and no disciplinary records either. She hoped Applejack could fill in some of the blanks, or else she'd be starting from scratch. Applejack! Said Cheerilee. So good to see you! You're here to drop off green, I take it? Yeah. Applejack nodded. There were some things I wanted to discuss with you. That's great! Replied Cheerilee. I wanted to ask about what prior education she's had. Well, she seems pretty clever. Said Applejack. But she won't tell us anything about her past, so there's not much to say about that. I'll see how she goes in class today. Said Cheerilee. If she's keeping up okay, then I can test for any gaps in her knowledge once she's had a chance to settle in. That's what I wanted to talk to you about, actually. Applejack admitted. Green has some... issues you should be aware of. Oh? She has poor coordination and struggles to grip things with her hooves. Said Applejack. She can read, but I'm not sure if she'll be able to write legibly. Cheerily frowned. Oh, I see. She said. And what about her magic? No spells yet, but she's having magic surges. Cheerily's eyes widened, imagining the damage an unstable unicorn full with a mana pool of an eight-year-old could do to her classroom. Magic surges? At her age? Cheerily questioned. Well, only once, so far. Applejack said. We're hoping it was a one-time thing. Oh, anything else I should know? She gets really frightened when she meets new ponies. Said Applejack. So maybe don't make her introduce herself in front of the whole class? <sighs> Even if she's shy, it's usually best to get introductions out of the way up front. Cheerily said. If the other students see me treating her differently, it may not be the best first impression. Ugh, she's not just shy. Applejack said. She has panic attacks. Oh dear. Said cheerily. Well, I'll certainly do whatever I can to help her feel comfortable. One more thing. If you see her looking at a fixed point and taking slow breaths, that means she's feeling anxious and doing her breathing exercises. Applejack explained. So, try not to interrupt her. Alright class, we have a new student today! Said Cheerily. Her name is Green, and I expect you all to make her feel welcome. That's alright, they're just kids, it's just words, they can't hurt you. I mean, they're bigger than you, and you don't even know how to run, so they probably could hurt you really badly, but they won't, right? I couldn't remember the Crusaders ever getting beaten up physically, but this world seems much more real. Oh god, everyone's still looking at me! I must be doing something wrong. Relax, breathe, in, out. They're probably waiting for me to introduce myself. Uh, hi! My name is Green. I managed to say. And I don't know how I got here. Stupid! Stupid! Why does this have to be so hard? Why was I so anxious just meeting a group of children? The class greeted me in unison. All right, class. Said cheerily. Eyes front. Today, we're going to be learning about how to read a calendar. There was a murmur of dissatisfaction from the class, and one of the young ponies raised her hoof. Yes, Swist? Said cheerily. Isn't Green going to introduce herself in front of the class? I wanted to hide my face, but I knew I had to keep my body language neutral. If I showed weakness, I knew they'd bully me forever. Keep breathing. Don't move. Only if she wants to. Said cheerily. If we get through this lesson quickly, I can give you all an early mark for recess. I was trapped. If I said no, every pony would think I'm shy. If I said yes, I'd be holding them back from early recess, and they'd all be angry with me. Why did she have to do this to me? I tried to answer, and my decision was all but made for me when I realized I couldn't move. I opened my mouth and, rather than make strangled noises, I closed it again. Swallowing dryly, I shook my head in the negative. As the class moved on, I couldn't focus. 
but it hardly mattered in a class about reading calendars. I felt like I had a piss, but from experience, I knew with how suddenly it had come on that it was just a fear response. Green? Relax. Breathe. You haven't done anything wrong. Did you hear the question, Green? Truly asked in a gentle tone. No. I replied. What was it again? I was asking how many days there are in a year. 365? I answered. Not quite. Any pony else? The teacher asked. Yes, Diamond Tiara? There are a thousand. Her stuck-up voice put my teeth on edge. Even fools know that! That's not a kind thing to say, young filly. Shirley admonished. See me after class. Great, now the teacher was defending me. I was gonna pay for that. As the lesson wore on, I felt my need to piss grow stronger. Maybe I really did need to go. I couldn't ask for a hall pass, though. I didn't want to interrupt the lesson, and the other kids would probably think I was running off to the bathroom to cry. In any case, Shirley had said we would get an early recess, so I shouldn't have to wait too long. By the time the lesson was winding down, all I could really think about was plotting the fastest way to get to the bathroom after class was let out. I would wait a little bit for the other kids to get through the door so they wouldn't bump into me. And then, I'd make a break for the bathrooms I'd seen on the way in. Thankfully, when I got to the bathroom, the stalls were empty. I hadn't considered what I'd do if letting the other students leave the classroom first had meant a line. It took a bit of concentration to ensure my hooves didn't slip on the hard floor. The last thing I wanted to do was skid into a wall. The toilet was scaled down a bit from the full-sized ones I'd seen so far, which made it more comfortable to use at my size. Feeling much relieved, I left the stall and went to wash my hooves. I had to fight down a spike of panic when I saw another pony enter the bathroom. Relax, breathe, you have every right to be here. The sky blue Pegasus Colts looked at me in shock as he and I came to the same realization. My skin went cold and I felt like I had a piss again. The cold hooves were thunderous on the tile floor as he galloped away. Miss Cheerily! Miss Cheerily! The colt yelled. Green is in the wrong bathroom! I had a feeling that would happen, considering Green was originally a guy and after so many years of being used to that, it's, you're gonna end up making a mistake. Anyway, let's get on to our not embarrassed donators. Top donator, Star630, Battle Swaffle, Only One Thing, Saru Orion, Iron Sky, and Jesse Smith. Match Break 109, Jock Tiop, Dark Side Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Arpasta Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brother, Mortar, Dumber, Kill My Ruin, Tide 1952, Will Chris Twinkie, Rise, Soul Shadow Moon, Luigi88, Chancellor Quest, Big Smoke 369, Bobcat GGF, Murder Princess, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.